Audiobook Creation Exchange is the dominant force when it comes to self-publishing your audiobooks. It reaches places like Audible, Amazon, and Apple. In fact, it's the most direct route to getting your book over on Audible and Amazon. Those are two very, very big players when it comes to the world of audiobook sales. In fact, they're collecting the reliance share of of the global publication profits and this is why a lot of people are willing to deal with their shenanigans since october of 2020 a lot of people have had some issues have taken umbrage with those folks over at audible in fact it's for a number of reasons so we're going to do a deep dive into some of the issues and the dangers of publishing your audiobooks to audible in this day and age. Make sure that you stay tuned to today's podcast. Just a very big, quick shout out to the fine folks over at Dibley Create. Discover Dibley Create, your ultimate project partner. Get ready for a new era of productivity and collaboration. Introducing KIP, Dibley Create's cutting edge AI technology. From brainstorming to generating project outlines, KIP does it all. Collaborate seamlessly with your team in real time, shaping ideas into reality. Personalize your projects with various text styles, formatting options and layouts. Export effortlessly and work offline so you never are limited by your location. Unleash your creativity with Dibley Create. Visit my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash Dibley Create. And redefine how you work today. Dibley Create, where innovation begins. And I have to tell you folks that I just got done working with Dibley Create for the last week straight. And oh, I've got a really good video that's in the works on the main channel. So make sure you stay tuned. It was a seven day book writing challenge I did strictly using Dibley Create on my iPhone 7. Was I able to do it? Well, you're going to be able to find out here in that upcoming video. All right, let's kind of get right back on track, talking about the issue at hand. What I won't be discussing today is what ACX is or how it works or how to upload there. I've done tons of tutorials when it comes to audiobook creation exchange. In fact, I was probably one of the biggest ambassadors and advocates for audiobook creation exchange until some issues started rolling out. And these issues are really not good. And I'm not sure if you're fully aware of some of those things and some of the implications that uh, come from some of these problems. So this is in no certain order, although I'm gonna give you the juicy tidbits up front and, and close and personal. So I mentioned real briefly here at the very beginning of the podcast, how in October of 2020, there was a bit of an issue. And now this was what had started out as a small problem that escalated into a larger problem. And it's now known as AudibleGate. Now you feel free to go ahead and look up the website audiblegate.com if you want more details about it. But what ended up happening was there was an issue with refunds being pulled from people's accounts. Now back then, there was no column at all dictating or determining or telling you what refunds you were getting pulled out. All they were doing was they would just subtract it from your bottom line. So you just had to assume that they were paying you out what you should be uh, being paid out. Well, apparently they got backed up with a lot of refunds and decided, let's just go ahead and pull it all out at once. And what ended up happening was a lot of people all of a sudden noticed that they were going into the negative. They actually owed ACX money for these refunds that were all of a sudden dumped into accounts. And uh, it, it, it mildly affected some people and it affected a lot of people in a very serious way. And this all kind of comes back to their refund policy for customers. So for Audible, they allowed customers to return, and they still do uh, allow this to today, they allow them to return an audiobook within 365 days of purchasing it. Now, it doesn't matter how much they've consumed. Keep in mind that a platform like KDP or Amazon, to be more specific, when you have consumed 10% or more of your ebook after purchasing, you can't return it unless there's special considerations. But beyond that, they've really tightened that one down. For back then, there were people that would go onto Reddit and other forums where they would brag about 
getting refunds for audiobooks. Like they treated it like a library lending system. It was almost like they had a blockbuster card to renting out as many things as they wanted to. And all they had to do is just return one audiobook and get the other. Well, the good thing is, is once everybody finally made a stink about it, ACX and Audible to a certain extent. And by the way, that's going to be interchangeable since ACX is a direct pipeline to Audible. Well, they discovered, oh, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. They started to crack down on that. Now, the refund policy is still really loose. It's, you know, you, you don't like it, just return it. So now customers still have the 365 day return window despite how much they consume. And account holders are only responsible for the first seven days. So they did minimize the amount of time that we as rights holders to our audiobooks would be held responsible for that refund. Beyond that seven days, if someone returns it, Audible's got to eat it. I don't like that. Nonetheless, it's not a good look and it's not something that I would agree to. I'm surprised that they continue to do this. They also encourage returns okay they do this when you order an audiobook at least this has been in the past i don't know if that's currently happening now because i don't get any audiobooks from audible anymore because of all their garbage but they encourage returns so someone will purchase an audiobook and then they will immediately send a confirmation and then they'll let them know hey by the way just so you know you can get a refund if you're not happy with this here's an audiobook you should check out it's almost like they're offering their hand picked more suitable replacement what the hell is that that is absolute garbage can you imagine if you went into a fast food restaurant and you ordered your food and they hand it off to you before you take your tray full of food, they say to you, you know what? If you don't like this meal, we've got this other meal. So like, if you're not happy with it, just, just bring your tray back. We don't care how much you've consumed or ate. We'll give you this other thing here. Well, of course I'm going to make it an all you can eat buffet. You just encouraged me. And now you start to get me questioning on whether my purchase was actually suitable to begin with. Like, why did I buy this? I should have got this handpicked one because now you're recommending it to me. That is absolute garbage. Audible should be ashamed of themselves for doing a practice like that because they're just putting a culture out there of allowing for refunds and encouraging people to get the books that they handpick themselves. So let me get off that rant right there. You want more details about a lot of the refund policy and some of the other shenanigans involved with Audible, go over to audiblegate.com. They have a lot of reading material. They have a lot of podcasts. I've been in touch with the person in charge with that, and she's keeping me up to date on what's going on in the legal proceedings. I'm going to tell you this, that right now, they earlier this year, uh, there was a lawsuit, I think, being held by Authors Guild. I could be wrong. My apologies that they ended up losing the, the lawsuit. And the reason being is that if you're utilizing the platform, you have already agreed to their terms of service. So meaning that you're okay with it if you plan on distributing through them and any of the other refund type stuff, well, it's their game. You're playing it. You don't want that, you gotta leave. So yeah, there you go. Too bad, so sad is essentially what they're saying. All right, so here's some other issues because I've got a ton of these issues and this can turn into a full on all out rant. So here's the other big issue. ACX is only available to account holders in the US, UK, Canada, and Ireland. And it has been years since they added Canada and Ireland. There has been no rumblings of it being handled in any other region. So this means that if you do not have a business that's based in the US, UK, Canada, and Ireland, you cannot and should not be using Audiobook Creation Exchange. Outside of that, well, you know, you're just going to have to go somewhere else because here's the problem. If you try to set up an ACX account and publish a bunch of audiobooks and they discover that you are outside those four regions, they will freeze your account under suspicion, meaning that you will no longer be able to upload any books. And one can also be able to speculate that you would not be able to get any earnings from those books with inside your audiobook account. Um, I haven't had the chance to speak any of these foreign 
um, rights holders or these foreign account holders to find out what all that they were limited, but I do know they were froze out of their accounts. It wasn't that the accounts were terminated, it was that they were froze. They couldn't do anything else with that. So to me, that right there is just indicative of the fact that they really don't want to work with a larger global audience, that they're not interested in that, that they're pretty happy with duping US, UK, Canada, and Ireland folks. If you're outside of that, well, good news. They don't want you there anyway, so go check out other avenues. Places like Findaway Voices, Publish Drive, uh, gosh, the list goes on, Lantern Audio, uh, let's see, your Authors Republic. There's so many I've mentioned in previous uh, videos before, and these ones are going to allow you, regardless of where you're at, to publish through them. And the cool thing is, is with most of those other platforms, you still reach Amazon and Audible. The problem is it's going to be at a significantly less royalty because obviously when you're doing a low royalty through those avenues, such as Audible and Amazon, the middlemen are going to take their cut before you get your cut. Yeah, that stinks. All right, next big issue here. They've got a very unclear system when it comes to the royalty share program. Now, uh, let me briefly explain what the royalty share program is. Let's say that you're a cash strapped author or you're a little bit leery about spending thousands of dollars on audiobook production. So they have what's called the royalty share program in which you can do a 50-50 royalty split with a narrator. The narrator takes all of the risk because they have to do all the production. They need to invest all their time, energy, and money into producing this for you in exchange for 50-50% of the earnings. Now, bear in mind, that is not 50% of the retail price because when you do the royalty share program underneath the exclusivity agreement only, you can't do it non-exclusive, by the way, it has to be exclusive, um, you will only get 40% of each one of the sales, okay? So that means you're getting 20% of each sale and the narrator is getting 20% of each sale. Now this is works on a seven year agreement, meaning that you have to stick with that for seven years unless you plan on speaking to your narrator and getting out of the agreement or buying out that agreement, uh, you're pretty much stuck with that. And after that seven year agreement, it renews every year thereafter until you otherwise say, hey, I want it pulled off of the market. You never own the rights to the audio content. Let me repeat that. You never ever own the audio rights to the content that was done through a 50-50 royalty split. It's, that's, that's understandable. I'm a little bit more experienced in this business, but back when I first broke into it in 2015, I didn't know any better. So I went all in on all of these 50-50 royalty plot or these royalty share programs. And yeah, so here I am stuck with these books and some of them that are pulling in a significant amount of earnings. And the problem is when it's pulling in a significant amount of earnings, the narrator stands to lose quite a bit if you try to buy out their agreement. So they're not going to charge you their regular per finished hour rate. In fact, a lot of them will probably charge you a significantly amount higher, okay? So I'll tell you, there were some narrators that kind of got screwed at the end of the day because when my seven year agreement was up with them and they were trying to highball me on some stuff, I pulled it. I was like, okay, you're not gonna play, play right. You're not gonna give me a realistic per finished hour rate, then screw it. No one's getting any money and I pulled it. So the other issue you're gonna run into is, let's just say, Okay, you, you've done the royalty split with somebody. You, you did the full seven years, or maybe you're getting towards the end of it and you made enough money that you want to buy out that agreement. Even if you buy the rights, you have to delist it. Then you lose all of the reviews and any algorithmic relevance on the Audible platform and on Amazon. You have to essentially start all over with a fresh upload, despite it being the same audiobook. This is a goofy system. If I want to buy out this agreement and own 100% of it, why should I have to take it down and then put it back up? It's the same audiobook. Just remove that person from this. To me, that seems like a real simple solution here, ACX. 
Why are you making it more difficult? Why aren't you putting things into place that makes sense? This doesn't make any sense, especially if I've gone through the trouble to pay that narrator what they're worth and what they ask for to get the full rights. So that part I just don't like. And I didn't find that out until about a couple years ago when I was like, oh, this is kind of goofy. Like I am stuck. Either I take them down or I buy them out. And even when I buy them out, they're going to charge me too much. This is why I don't like their 50-50 royalty split program. And there's also their other one where you have to do a per finished hour with the combination of a 50-50 split in the per finished hour is going to be less. Ugh, come on now. No, no. Next issue, the bounty program abuse. And I'm going to put quotation marks on bounty program abuse. Now, if you're not familiar, there is a bounty program that you can do where you send potential listeners through any of their four links. And I believe it's US, UK, France, and maybe Germany. Uh, you'll have to double check that inside your dashboard, but each one of your audiobooks comes with a unique bounty program link. And at which point you can share this through social media, through your website, through your email list. And if somebody goes and redeems that, they get your book for free. Now, you're probably going, whoa, hang on a second. I just went from making very little amount per audiobook to making free. This makes no sense. No, no, hang on a second. It actually is rather exciting. And it's very, very, I, this was one of the ones that back in the day when it first started, the bounty program was amazing. Nowadays, it's a little bit harder, okay? Because you have to direct the traffic in order to get accredited for this. Because if somebody gets that audiobook, they download it, and then they stay on as an Audible member for 30 days after their free 30-day trial, you get $75. Now, if it's a 50-50 royalty split, by the way, you get $50 and your narrator gets $25, which is really good, especially considering that their whole pricing structure is a fixed pricing structure. And that's a great, like, one that I haven't even put into the notes. I just thought about this as their whole pricing structure. ACX chooses the pricing for you based on the length of your audiobook. No, you don't choose it. On other platforms like Find Away Voices, you get to choose how much your audiobook is going to be. ACX looks at it and goes, oh, it's three hours long? Okay, it's going to be $4.99. What? Oh, why? Why are you going to charge the same amount for my audiobook as, let's say, for instance, another one that doesn't have as much value in it, all right? That makes zero sense. So the lack of control stinks to all high hell. So let's, let's go back to the bounty program, okay? Just got done with the pricing rant. You guys get it? It stinks. They control the pricing. You don't, unless, of course, you've changed your, the length of your book, which, good luck, that's going to cost a lot of money. But at any rate, the bounty program abuse. So I'd had a number of people reach out to me about a couple of years ago that they were getting their accounts terminated or they were getting flagged due to bounty program abuse. Say what? Okay, so hang on a second. You give me promo credits that allow people to go ahead and listen to my audiobook for free in exchange, hopefully, for getting a review or for promotional sake, if you will. But the moment that I go and I share this link and someone redeems this, I am all of a sudden held accountable for the people that are using this link. Do you see the flaw in this? You are giving me, ACX is giving me a link to share with people, to join their overpriced, stupid audiobook program on Audible. And I'm losing money on this. I'm not even making the $75 bounty in a lot of instances. And then you have the audacity to come back at me and say, I'm abusing the bounty program. Where? Where's the proof? Huh? that I shared this link and that someone decided to just go ahead and take the free stuff and bail? Got news for you here. If you say free, some people are gonna say, I want it. They don't care what it is. They're just gonna take it. And then at the moment that it becomes a premium option, 
they're going to unsubscribe. We can't sit here and be held accountable for the people using our links, because as soon as we promote that link, it's out of our hands. I mean, are we supposed to do background checks for the people who use bounty programs to make sure that they're, you know, they don't have a shady background? No. If you don't want us using the bounty program, if you think that people are abusing it, stop giving it. Stop dangling this carrot in front of our face saying, here's $75, you can come get it. You got to give your book for free though, in order to get that $75. Oh, look at you abusing the system. I, even though you didn't get $75, we can clearly tell that you're trash. That's essentially what they're saying to us. Screw your bounty program. Keep your $75 because this is stupid. Accusing people of abusing the system. What? Give me proof. Give me solid proof that these authors are abusing the bounty program because you know darn well you don't have the proof. Let's go ahead and segue into something else before I get too heated up. Let's talk about the ludicrously low royalty rate of 40%. Now, I understand a lot of the platforms in audiobook distribution, the percentages are a little bit lower. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. For whatever reason, They've decided that 40% is great for exclusive content. So if you're staying to ACX strictly, you'll get 40% revenue. But you want to go somewhere else so you can, I don't know, make more sales and get more readers or even reach into, call me crazy, something called a library system. You're going to have to take a 15% cut, bringing that low 40% royalty down to 20%. Five percent. How stupid is that? You're going to punish me because I'm trying to reach more readers or listeners in this instance. That's stupid. It's selfish. And it's very indicative of a platform that just doesn't care about what I have or what I do. Rights holders will have to sell thousands of copies before they ever recoup their investment. Unless they found some bargain basement, cheap narrator that ran $25 per finished hour. And it was only one hour of content for the vast majority of us that are doing full length books or novels, or even for heaven forbid, epic length novels that can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And in the meantime, they're already pricing that book. They've already made up their mind based on that length is how much they're going to charge for that specific book. And then you're going to get this pittance. 25% if you're non-exclusive, 40% if you're exclusive, here's an extra cookie for you to have. No, that's goofy. That's silly. We should not have to stand for it because audiobook production in good audiobook production, especially if you're hiring voice actors or even an entire team of voice actors, is a lot of money. ACX pays such low rates, but in the past they have been generous in their marketing budget for influencers. How many times have you watched a YouTube video or listened to a podcast where they say, today's broadcast is sponsored by the folks over at Audible. Go over and check out Audible, blah, blah, blah. I can tell you as an influencer in quotations, I know many other influencers as well who have actually had some of these deals and they pay them a lot. They pay them a lot. It is absolutely insane. Not to mention there was an affiliate program involved in something like that. Meaning that if somebody went over through their link, they got paid a percentage of each one of the sales. Why not save that money you are spending on influencers and pay the rights holders and have them be your best ambassadors? Because here's the funny thing is if you treat people the way you would like to be treated, it's beautiful. It's magical. They will give to you as much as you give to them. Save your money on the influencers. Kick up our percentages, forget this whole non-exclusive exclusive deal, move that 40% up. Let's see 50% match, match uh, Spotify. Spotify is doing 50%. Why don't you do it? And let's talk about this other issue. 
Oh my gosh. If you want to publish an audiobook through ACX, you have to have it available in ebook and print book on Amazon. Say what? What about your Audible originals? The ones that don't even have an ebook or print version to it. What? Why can't I just be able to publish an audiobook and distribute that without having to claim where it's at on Amazon? And here's the problem. They've run into some problems and ACX knows this. You know that I know this here, folks. That there are people that were going in and claiming the rights of books that they didn't have. Why? Because it's super easy. All you have to do is search up through their database of all the books that they pull back from Amazon. They can select that, find the script for it, find themselves a 50-50 split royalty uh, you know, a narrator, or even just get something out of pocket, or worse yet, find some AI and try to put it there. I know AI is not allowed on ACX, but somehow it still makes it through. Why are they doing that? Just, just remove that. You are literally putting something right into the bad actor's laps by saying, these books don't have audiobooks. Want to claim it? Now they've caught some of these ne'er-do-wells and they've closed down their accounts. But how many have slipped through the cracks? Because quite frankly, there are some authors out there that usually publish their stuff and they don't even think about other things like audiobook. So... They may not know that someone claimed their rights and are now starting to make money off of them unless they are really, really attentive to that. If you look at other audiobook distribution platforms as like the likes of Find Away Voices or Publish Drive, you don't need to have the audiobook match up with a print or ebook. You can just publish the audiobook. It's that simple. All right, I've gone on a big rant here, folks, and I do have some final thoughts. Remember, elevate your projects with Dibley Create, where collaboration meets AI-powered innovation. Visit dalelinks.com slash dibleycreate for more details today. Big shout out and thank you to Dibley Create for sponsoring this broadcast. Here are my final thoughts here, folks. When prolific fantasy author Brandon Sanderson, he's, gosh, the bee's knees, he's, he's quite the resource in all of indie and trad publishing. When Brandon came out as avoiding distribution to Audible. He cited some of the issues that I've even stated, how the low royalties and how there's the refund abuse and all that type of stuff. When you see that he's standing up for us, you know that it means something. He's not putting his audiobooks over there until it has become resolved. Instead, he's going over to platforms like Spotify and Speechify. If more authors followed suit, maybe, just maybe ACX would listen and start to make some changes. But it's not enough that we work together to send a message. Because we know there's gonna be some people out there that are like, I don't wanna join the movement. They're also called scabs, folks. They're just gonna kinda of keep on uploading that. It's not enough that we work together to send a message. We have to educate readers and listeners. They need to understand what is happening behind the scenes. We need to educate influencers before they start to promote services like Audible for tens of thousands of dollars on a sponsored video. We need to let them know what they are getting into. Now, I gotta admit to you, I've been on the fence about using or not using ACX for distribution because if I avoid ACX for distribution, this means that I won't have Amazon and Audible. I could still reach Apple through places like Findaway Voices. And then in Find Away Voices, I can still hit Amazon and Audible if I wanted to. But the thing is, they still get to change the pricing. They still have all their wonky rules. It just applies to a third party at this point. I gotta admit, I'm leaning towards just avoiding it altogether and just educating my readers. How about you? Will you continue to use ACX despite all its horrendous practices? What are your thoughts about some of those items? And next week, it's going to be a little bit more lighthearted. I'm not going to be as ranty here, folks. I promise it doesn't come too often. We're going to be talking about publishing audiobooks on Amazon and beyond. That's my wheelhouse right there. I like to talk about wide publishing. And wide publishing is where it's at when it comes to audiobooks. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale. And I'll catch you guys next week.